Hey everybody, welcome to today's video talking about some audiophile film scores that you have recommended to me to take a listen to. We've got 15 different film scores to go through today. I'm going to talk to you about my thoughts on them as kind of an audiophile test album, hear the best of your system type album. And before we get into listening to the very first album on the list, I just want to say a huge thanks to all of you who shared with me your suggested albums. If the album that you suggested doesn't come up in this list, it's probably because I couldn't find it on Cobras or Tidal. They're the only two streaming services that I currently use. And then the other huge thanks that I want to send out there is to channel sponsor Linsoul. Linsoul is an audio retailer for headphones, earphones, DACs, headphone amps, etc. This is their website here that you can see on screen. And Linsoul have been kind enough to sponsor Passion for Sound for about a year now, I think it is. And it's thanks to their sponsorship that I can do videos like this one that don't always get as much traffic. They don't generate any kind of direct income to help the channel keep going. But thanks to Linsoul, I can afford to do these kind of passion projects, the sorts of projects that I like to do and that I believe some of you really enjoy watching. And so again, a huge thanks to Linsoul for making this possible. What that also means that if you would like to continue to support the channel and videos like this one, then please consider using the link down below to go through and purchase whatever your next device is from Linsoul because it's a great way to say thank you to them for investing some money in Passion for Sound and helping me to grow the channel and share more with you. And it's also a wonderful way to help me continue making videos like this one because the link down below is an affiliate link and any and all support is always deeply appreciated. What I'm using for my listening today is the Focal Utopia 2022 edition. That's connected up to the Hyperman Golden Wave Prelude headphone amp and preamp. The review for that one's coming soon. You don't want to miss that one, I promise. And that means make sure you subscribe. And then that is in turn connected to the Chord Hugo TT2 being fed by the M scaler. That's being fed from my computer, which is optimized with a, an audio file USB card and an audio file LAN card. So it's kind of equivalent in my testing previously to a high-end streaming type device. All the noise gets filtered out of the system by those various cards and what comes out at the other end is a nice pristine signal. So we should be able to hear the very best of these albums. Let's jump in and find out. The first album I've got, and I'll put on screen who suggested these albums when I get to the editing, so apologies for not calling you out verbally, but the first recommended album that I've got here is How to Train Your Dragon soundtrack. This is a film that I know, but not a soundtrack that I've ever tried or even was aware of before. Okay, straight away, I'm about 32 seconds into the first track, um, which is called This is Burke. And the very first thing I'd say is that it's a beautiful recording from a tonal point of view. The orchestra is rich and lush and full, but not thick in any way. Um, the thing that really stood out to me, though, was that there's a nice sense of coherency, but also you can pick out the individual instruments. The oboe, I think it is, that's playing at the beginning there. I didn't pay enough attention, but I'm pretty sure it was an oboe. Um, you can actually hear, and this is really interesting, you can actually hear the clicking of the valves as the player is moving their fingers across the valves and the keys. But the it's kind of a bit weird in a way because you shouldn't normally hear that if you're sitting way back in an auditorium listening to music. So it's an interesting combination that the orchestra sounds like it's off in the distance and it's all one big element. The, the orchestra is one big kind of body of, of music creating stuff. And yet you can hear these fine details that come from just a single instrument. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, beautiful recording so far, it seems. All right, having spent a bit of time, you can see I'm now up to track 13. I've skipped through a bunch of different tracks. Um, I think it's a really lovely recording from a tonal point of view and a general clarity point of view. Each instrument sounds very kind of cleanly recorded, very well defined. It's interesting the way they've melded together the whole orchestra with the soloist instruments when they're relevant and when they're coming forward. I don't know that I'd use it for testing gear only because I don't feel like it's got a lot of layering in the soundstage. Um, it's probably actually quite accurate to how you would hear it if you were listening to the orchestra live, but I feel like I want a bit more depth and layering from an, an audio file kind of system appreciation, system testing point of view. Uh, having said that, it's a beautiful recording, there's no doubt about it, and for tonality, clarity, resolution, and timbre, I think it's really fantastic, and it's also quite good music. It's... Um, you know, some film scores you listen to and out of the context of the movie, it's not enjoyable. But I would say with this one, it's actually very enjoyable music as well. So great suggestion, really lovely recording, um, just not so much layering and depth information that I personally really enjoy when I'm looking for audio file tracks. So let's move on and find what our next album is. I'd never even heard of this show or series. I don't know if it's a one-off or if it was a TV series, um, but it's from animation. It's a big album, so I'm not going to cover off all the different tracks in here, but we'll have a general sense. I'll, I'll shuffle through and skip through some of the tracks and we'll see what we find. In fact, let me just go to the album and we're going to shuffle through this one. 
Uh, this is a, a really great starting point as in contrast to the last one. So what you immediately hear listening to this first track, which is called Heart, um, I'm pretty sure this is the first track on the album. Yep. Um, what you immediately notice is that the this the orchestra still sounds like one body, but you can also hear that there's a little bit of depth and three-dimensionality to that body. Uh, lots going on here. There's lots of texture. There's um, a technique being used. I think it sounds like there's some cold enio playing, which is where they turn the, the bow of the stringed instrument around and actually hit the strings with the wood of the bow. So you've got this wonderful kind of texture, percussive sound coming from the orchestra. There's just lots, lots going on. There's some bright trumpet blasts and horn section in there. It all comes across beautifully, wonderfully separated, lots of layering. So we're off to a strong start on this one. I'm a few tracks in now, and I happen to have ended up with another version of the first track, Heart. So obviously as we go through here, there's multiple versions of the same track. I'm guessing if this is a TV show, it might be the theme song played by different instruments in different styles at different times. Obviously, if there's characters that have their own themes, that could be repeated in different ways throughout the, the soundtrack. What's relevant here, though, and interesting is that the recordings are so clean, maybe even almost too clean. So listening to this one, Heart Version 4 is being played by a strummed instrument. It's probably a guitar. It might be something slightly different to a guitar but it's being uh, played by this strum string instrument. It's very clean, very crisp. There's some percussion, there's a piano. Everything's placed really nicely around the soundstage, but it's almost too clinical. It's almost like everything's so precise that it's kind of like each sound is cut off from each other sound. So it's interesting and very enjoyable. I'm not knocking the, the enjoyment factor for a second, um, but I would call out the fact that in some ways it's unnatural which can be great for testing a system if you just want to focus in on how precisely the system is focusing each sound, placing each sound, etc. But if you're listening to a system for the natural ability of it to just bring forward all the music, this is almost an artificially well-separated track that could be misleading in some ways. Uh, having said that, really, really cool recording, beautiful recording. Totally understand why this has been recommended. I'm going to try a couple more tracks and then we'll, we'll wrap this one up. This album's got an amazing range to it. I've just finished up on, on Journey version 2, and it's it's a kind of a bluegrass-style track. So you've got banjo, you've got brushed snare drum, um, some sort of kick bass is going on in there, lots happening, all sorts of texture, detail, and resolution there. So, again, beautiful recording. It's an album that it's probably, again, not one that I would sit down and listen to end-to-end -end like so many soundtracks, only because it's got so much range to it but I can definitely see people wanting to use some of the tracks here for testing. I can also see people having favourite tracks that they just want to pluck out and add to a playlist. It's a really interesting album, so thank you very much for the suggestion. It's a, an excellent suggestion and an excellent, excellent test album in the right circumstances. As I said, it's almost too good in some ways and will overly... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to be too kind on some systems. It's going to make average systems sound better than they might be, but that can also be really good because a great, great system is going to sound exceptional. So, um, yeah, really interesting album suggestion. Thank you very much to the suggester. Now, let's jump back to the playlist. Ah, this is one I do know. So this is the, um, let's just go over here. This is the, the Mission soundtrack. And I've got this, I think some of the tracks from here, I can't remember which ones, I think Gabriel's Oboe is one that I often have used in the past as a test track. It's a beautiful recording, amazing piece of music. So this one I'm very familiar with, but I've never listened to the whole album with the, the view to it as a test album. So excited for this one. Let's jump into it. So the first thing to know about this album, if you've never heard it before, go listen to it. If you're into any kind of classical film score type music, it's a spectacularly beautiful score. Um, what else is great about it, though, is the recording quality. So it's an older recording. I think it was a 1986 recording, it says there. Um, the the way they've put together the music, you've got the orchestra as this big kind of body of sound in the sort of background of the sound stage, not way, way back, but, but not right in the forefront. You've then also got the South American drumming going on, and then you've got the choir, which is kind of mixed in with the orchestra in terms of it's sort of one of those background sounds, and then the key sounds are popping forwards out of that mix in a way that is probably not natural if you were sitting in an auditorium, but incredibly enjoyable and still very coherent to the overall sound. So great for image placement, separation, tonal quality is excellent. 
the ability to create the large, full-bodied sound of an orchestra. It, it kind of does it all, and at the same time, it's beautiful to listen to. It's one of those film scores that I think, when you listen to this and it conjures the emotions that it does, it almost makes you want to go and see the movie if you haven't. And I actually haven't seen The Mission. I probably should go see it. Um, because it's it's one of those that you want to know what was going on to have such emotive music behind it. So, um, yeah, really nice start here. One quick note here, beware of dynamic range on this album. Um, I've noticed from the beginning to... I'm up to track four now, so I'm just kind of skimming through getting a feel for it. The volume control has been notched down a number of times because it builds and it gets quite powerful. I'm on Ave Maria... Guarani, I'm guessing it's called, and the the volume was quite strong for the um, the vocal when it came in. This is a mostly choral one, at least 29 seconds in, it's still choral, and um, it was quite loud. So be aware of dynamic range for better and worse. I'm not normally into using choral work for test tracks, but this one's really cool. So I haven't moved past that that fourth track yet, Ave Maria Guarani, and the reason I haven't moved past it is because the recording is gorgeous. It's able to lay out the whole chorus or the the choir that's doing the singing it's probably not a full-size chorus but the choir that's doing the singing in front of you as the listener it sort of wraps around the sides a little bit but what's amazing is it comes across as one choir but you can focus in on each individual voice almost it's quite quite amazing um so this one's another another great option potentially i'm probably going to stop after this i'm only, i'm only up to track five here but it's just a killer album in every way. So the reason I'm stopping on this one again is, so this is track five brothers and there's an acoustic guitar, a classical guitar being used here. If you're someone that has a pair of headphones that does transients or a system in general that does transients very, very well. Um, and I shouldn't say even headphones, it should, it could be speaker system. The quality of the recording of the guitar here, I think it's been quite closely mic'd and you're getting all that energy of each pluck of the guitar but not in an overly done or enhanced way. I can imagine on something like a Sasvara, this would sound absolutely glorious. Um, guitar, I find a plucked guitar is one of those things that certain headphones just really bring to life. And uh, and this would be quite special and spectacular on that sort of a setup. So check out the, the mission by um, Ennio Morricone. Uh, it's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful piece of music or score of music and also a wonderful, wonderful recording. So I'm going to pause that one here. I could rave about this all day but that's going to make for a boring video so let's move on to the next track or next album i should say all right so this time we've got quite a different sort of soundtrack here this is a recent one this is from the hours and it's a 2002 release by the look of it and by philip glass let's give this a run so off to a nice start there's a a certain sort of woody harmonic richness to the sound from the string quartet here the uh, instruments are nicely placed around the soundstage without being overly separated and it's a really interesting piece of music too it's it's drawing me and this is the first time i've ever heard it and I'm, I'm liking what i'm hearing so this one's proving interesting to me it's it's clearly beautifully recorded there's a lovely sense of separation and and when i say separation that's probably the wrong word there's a lovely sense of where everything is placed in the mix you can hear each string section so your violins separate from your cellos violas etc what I'm finding though, and the reason I'm not kind of raving about it is I'm up to track five out of 14 and so far everything sounds quite similar. There's not a lot of range and don't know, don't necessarily mean dynamic range so much as tonal range. It all sounds very similar and that's this quite rich, woody sort of resonant sound from the strings. There's not a lot of brightness to it, so you're not going to get a really good sense of the clarity of your system using this. Uh, it also, I'm finding it not particularly engaging and exciting to listen to. After the first track, which I was engaged by, every other track just sounds like a kind of a variation of the first one in the sense that tonality's not changing a lot, the feel of the music's not changing a lot. That probably makes sense for the movie. I haven't seen the movie. Um, so this is not a knock on the score. It's just so much not an album that I would be drawn to to listen to and also not so much giving me the, the range of sounds that I want to test with. But I will try a few more tracks just in case things pick up as maybe the movie reaches its climax. We'll see what happens. As we go more through the album, a little bit more does start to happen. So you're getting piano and harp coming in, sometimes working together, which produces some really interesting tonal qualities. It's still not grabbing me and engaging me. It's got a very similar feel throughout. Again, that's probably suitable for the movie. It's just not taking me on a journey as a listener um, without the understanding of the movie and the context of the movie. 
The the thing I did want to point out though is I feel for anyone that ever has to do a mix with a piano. And what I'm the reason I'm saying that is that in this, when the piano comes in in some of the tracks around, I think it was track seven or eight, the way it's been mixed, the piano is big. So it spans left to right across the soundstage. And I get why they do it because you kind of don't want to have this massive orchestral sound and then a piano just kind of plonked off to the side all on its own with no sense of scale to the piano. But at the same time, it makes it sound kind of unnatural because the piano starts to sound as big as the whole orchestra is wide. So it gets a bit tricky. So that's an interesting one. The If you saw my classical audio file albums for classical listening, um, that video we talked about in that video, how the, the orchestral stuff with the piano there were different ways of mixing it. So at one stage, it sounded like you were in the piano on a, I think it was a Han, Hani Rania, I think her name is, live from Studio S2 is the album. Um, it sounded like you're inside the piano. On another track, and I can't remember the name of it, it was a, um, it would have been a, an Eastern European pianist, I can't think of her name though, it was later on in, the, in that video. The piano sounded massive and right up in your face, and it was really dynamic and exciting, but in no case does it kind of sound like you're sitting in a room with a piano. And the same is true here. The piano sounds great and it's beautifully recorded, but at the same time, I don't know that it's necessarily a good reference point for, for kind of testing a system spatially when referring to the piano. And that's not what this is about. It's a film score. It's meant to sound good, and it definitely does. I think I'm going to stop here on this one, though, because it's not giving me enough variation and range for it to be an album that I would go to for testing, for listening, enjoyment, remembering the movie. Fantastic. It's a lovely recording, just not one that I'd use for testing. So let's see what we're up to next. All right, here's another one that I do know well, which is Skyrim, having played far too many hours on Skyrim. I'm going to shuffle this one and see what we hear. Um, for those not familiar, Skyrim is a massive open world game, uh, really big soundtrack. It's orchestral and choral. Got a lot of big sounding um, chorus sort of moments in it. So let's see what we hear. Now, by the way, in case you're not seeing this and you've just put this video on to listen to it, um, the version we're talking about here is the London Symphony Orchestra live 10th anniversary concert. Maybe not live, but it's the 10th anniversary concert. So this is an interesting start. I've, I've shuffled it to this first track being Dragonborn, which I think is actually the first track on the album. Um, and the shuffling is going to happen after that. But the the issue for me is that in this track, the, the chorus sounds insane. There's so much detail and texture in the vocals and power and scale. But then all of a sudden the French horns come in and the horn section in general, and it was all off into the right-hand side in my right ear. So I didn't get much sense of there being depth in the soundstage and that kind of natural layout of an orchestra, which maybe they weren't laid out in that way for this recording. Um, but I was very aware that the right channel was all the horns. So maybe on speakers, this could work a bit better than it does on headphones. Um, for those of you that haven't seen my classical music version of this video, the I've done testing between headphones and speakers with these sorts of things. And what I find is that in almost all cases, headphones and speakers do give you the same result. So the fact that I'm testing with headphones here doesn't mean I'm not hearing the music to its best abilities because it's a fantastic source chain, fantastic set of headphones. The, the only time I find that speakers really separate themselves from headphones in the listening experience is when you do get anything that's quite hard panned. Because obviously with a headphone, your virtual stage starts off out in front of you if something's dead center and it's a good source chain and then wraps around to the side of the head. So if anything is hard panned, it starts to sound like it's coming from the side rather than out in front on the right hand side. So I think that's what's going on here. And therefore, I'm not going to knock it for that, but it is worth being aware that headphones versus, versus speakers could be a differentiating point for whether or not you would use this album as a kind of a test or a reference album. But let's go on. We'll see some other, hear some other tracks, I should say, and, uh, and see what we hear. this is a beautiful overall album and recording. Um, the music from Skyrim is spectacular. It's not a relaxing listen. It's quite dramatic and 
and impactful, but that can make it a great system test for dynamic range and the ability for it to deliver that kind of tactile, powerful delivery. Um, what I would say, though, is that I was just looking up, and you'll have seen on screen, I was just looking up the um, the layout of the orchestra, and what I'm seeing in the in the footage there was that it looks like the layout of the orchestra is fairly traditional, uh, and so I'm not quite sure why it's been mixed the way it has. The I can't see in this image, I actually can't see where the, the French horns are located. I can see a tuba off to the right. I can see some trombones over towards the back, but that blast of horns that I heard earlier from the right-hand channel, I'm not seeing in any of these screenshots here where those horns would have come from that was in the right-hand channel. Um, so I don't know how they've mixed it or why they've mixed it that way. Yeah, okay, so here we go. So you can see the French horn there is in with the trombones. So I don't know why it was mixed off in the right-hand channel. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It still sounds fantastic. But as I said before, it might be a better album for speaker tests than for headphone tests. It is a wonderful recording. I think the only thing that's going to separate speakers and headphones is some of the spatial cues could be a little bit off in a kind of a two-channel direct into the ears headphone setup compared to an out in front of you two-channel setup for speakers. Um, but the recording's beautiful, the music's beautiful, really nice recommendation, really nice album. All right, back to the playlist, hopefully. All right, so we've done Skyrim. Let's have a look now at the human soundtrack. This is another one that I do not know at all. I don't actually even know the movie, so let's have a listen and see what we hear. I'm 10 seconds in, not even, nine seconds, and wow. Um, lots going on here, amazing textures. There's a, a an instrument, I don't know the correct name for it. It's the one where the, the instrument's in the mouth and they've got little kind of metal prongs that you twang with your fingers. It, lots going on here, spatially, tonally, texturally, really beautiful. All right, this is epic. So whoever, whoever suggested this one, thank you. This is amazing. Um, if you want one album that just tests your whole system, I reckon this could be it. It's got so much going on. Texture, you've got the ability to be delicate. There's a what's probably a, a child vocalist. It could be an amazingly pure sounding female singer. Uh, this is at the beginning of track three, Damn in China. Um, it's it's got everything it's got these big dynamic drums it's got the full scale orchestra all that textural stuff that i spoke about in the first track there's just so much happening and the music's beautiful as well so it's very enjoyable to listen to each track kind of takes you on a journey unlike what i said about the hours before where i felt like i was hearing kind of the same thing over and over again i'm three tracks in and i've heard three completely different musical presentations all orchestral film score type sound but with a huge range to it so yeah this is exciting really enjoying this i'm going to try just a few more tracks quickly and then move on because this is just one of those where at track three i'm happy to say check this out if you haven't already but let's see if there's any other standouts quickly i cannot wait to listen to this one in full i've, I've stopped again at track five i'm not getting very far because each time i listen to it i'm like oh, i've got to tell you about this this is magic so again thank you for the recommendation clear standout so far um, there's been some great, in fact, I don't think anything's really missed the mark as being an audio file level recording, but this one for me is just next level. Um, so I'm just going to chuck this straight into my playlist to have a listen to later, but it's one I'm definitely going to recommend to all of you to check out, take a listen to, share in your comments down below. If you go listen to it, come back and let us know in the comments what your favorite track is and why. I think it's really cool. So I'm going to move on from this one because it's just a flat out winner. Um, I don't really need to explore it further to tell you it's an absolute beast. So on to the next track or oh, sorry, album. I keep saying track, but it's an album. We are up to The Red Turtle, another one I know nothing at all about. So this is 2017. I don't know if that's when the movie was released or not, but that's what it's saying in Rune. Let's have a listen. I've got no idea what to expect here. Okay, so first thing, we've got a dynamic range alert here. Massive, massive dynamic range. Don't turn up your volume at the beginning of track one like I did. Uh, it will hit you. Um, the other thing I'm going to say is it's an interesting mix, the way the, the instruments have been placed together. I need to hear a couple more tracks before I talk more about that. This is a really beautiful album. The music in it is is very, very evocative, lots of emotion in it. Um, it's also beautifully recorded and you've got lots of great different textures going on. So there's a there's a harp off on the left-hand side at some points. The track I'm in at the moment, the girl, has some interesting plucked sounds, some of which I can recognize as probably plucked violin. Um, but there's, there's another one in there that I don't know if it's an electronic sound or if it's another instrument that I can't quite place. 
And again, I'm, I'm just kind of listening to everything at once. So some of you might listen to that and go, oh, do it, such and such. I'm not focused on that at the moment. So um, it might be really obvious and apologies if I've just had a total brain fade moment. The point though is that there's lots going on and it's beautifully mixed, beautifully put together. The um, woodwind section sort of hovers out behind some of the other instruments in a way that is kind of quite natural to the way an orchestra is laid out. I really like that. The only thing I would say about it is that the layout of the orchestra, the way it's been mixed, isn't a traditional layout. So it doesn't sound like you've got your strings on the left rotating around to your violas and your cellos. Somebody commented in the uh, the classical music version of this type of video, the, the audio file classical music albums video, they commented that some conductors choose to lay out the orchestra differently. And so it might be that's what's going on here because at times I'm hearing higher strings in the right channel. Right now in the girl, there's a solo violinist that's kind of dead in front of me. So it's an interesting layout that I'm not going to sit here and say it's wrong because it's been clearly set up in a different way. Just be aware of that going into it, that it's not your traditional layout, but everything's beautifully placed and coherently placed. In the classical music version of this, I talked about the fact that sometimes instruments would pop into places that didn't make sense to me as a listener. This one makes sense because it's in the context of a whole orchestra and each sound kind of merges in properly with the sounds next to it as opposed to just popping out of nowhere. So really enjoying this. It's a, it's a lovely recording. I'm not going to go as far as saying it's as good as Human, the last one. That was still a standout. But this is really pretty. Beautiful music too. This is going right up there for me next to the mission as an evocative emotional score that makes me want to go see the movie. I want to know now what was going on at the time that a track like Despair, for instance, was playing. Um, as I said, I've never heard of this movie before. I absolutely want to go see it now. And that's because not only is it beautiful music, but it's a gorgeous recording as well. So it's more of your traditional kind of film score in the sense that it's all orchestral. It hasn't got sort of the unique textures and range of something like Human that I talked about before. But if you're looking for a beautiful orchestral album, that is a joy to listen to and wonderfully recorded and is going to show off the spatial characteristics of your system, the tonal characteristics, the clarity and the, the um, transient, the articulation of transients in some of the plucked moments of things like harps. It's got all of that going on. So this is another fantastic recommendation. I think there's really not been, as I said earlier, not been a miss in this list so far. All of these have been great, but standout so far for me is the mission. The Red Turtle might be even better than the mission in terms of both recording, but also that evocative nature of it. And then uh, Human as well has been a real standout. So it's all been good, but those three in particular really, really jumping forward for me. Next up, we have quite a different one now. We've got the Spectre soundtrack. So this is from the James Bond 007 film Spectre. Let's see what we've got here. One of the benefits you get with an album like this from a, a testing of systems point of view is that with the more modern movie soundtracks, and I mean modern in the sense that a soundtrack that's with a movie like this, an action type movie where there's often going to be more electronic sounds used, you can get textures and sounds that you don't get from a normal orchestra. That can give you kind of quite tight impulse style bass notes and it can be really nice for testing the way that the system responds to that. Whereas an orchestra tends to be more mellow in the bass because it's coming from cellos or timpanies. They're not tight, fast bass notes the way it can be with electronic stuff. So that's one area that I like a soundtrack like this. On the other hand, there's a lot more ambient type sound. It's less melodic, less musical in some ways, and much more ambience based. So if you're honing in on a particular thing and you want to test a specific ability of your system to do something, this could be great. It's not so much where I would just want to put it on, follow the journey and see how the system delivers that journey to me. It's not going to do that quite as well. So, uh, so far, none of these tracks, I'm up to, I think only track three, they're not standing out to me as a test track so much as a, and when I say test track, they're not standing out to me as a listening experience so much as a, I want to hear if the system can do this well. Uh, and that's, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's beautifully recorded. It just doesn't take me on any journeys like some of the others did. Interestingly, when you get to a track like Donna Lucia, which is more like what I was talking about before, those kind of take you on a musical journey type tracks, the recording of the orchestra here is a little bit, it's not muted as such. There's still texture and clarity, but it's all slightly subdued. I don't feel like I'm as close and as connected to the orchestra as I was on some of those other albums that we've talked about so far. So 
I don't know. I don't know about this one. I don't know if it's going to quite make it into my my recommended test albums type list. It's nicely recorded, but I think it's it's obviously as it's kind of meant to be. It's focused on being a film score first rather than a spectacular musical album. But we'll try a few more tracks. We'll see what pops out. What pops out. When you get to tracks on this album like Backfire and whatever came before it. Uh, a place without mercy they're a bit more dynamic there's a bit more going on so you got the orchestra some more dynamics from the orchestra than something like the Donna Lucia track there's also that electronic music mixed in with it and so I can definitely understand why why this one's been suggested because you do get a lot of energy through the music it's going to show you how well your system's delivering that energy but also controlling it all giving you those dynamic swings it's it's definitely helpful in that regard it doesn't stand out to me as a particularly strong recommendation in comparison to a couple of the others in this in this set but that's only because the competition here is so strong everything's been so so good i think spectre's great i can absolutely see why it was suggested uh, but at the same time it, it's not sitting as high as some of the others for me because a lot of it is that more ambience type music with moments of really strong test stuff for those reasons i mentioned that combination of orchestral electronic the dynamics those kind of sharper impulse type sounds that you can't always get from orchestral music in the same way you get different benefits from orchestral music so it's good and certain test tracks are fantastic um, but overall i think as an album it's it's not one that i would go to as a test album because it's very much a specific moment in a specific track is the sort of thing I'd be using. And I have a feeling we're going to have a couple more of those coming up, knowing what some of the other um, tracks and albums were here. All right, we're now up to June. Now, I've got June in my playlist already, so I know the album, I know the soundtrack quite well, and it is an excellent, excellent recording. I think in some ways, straight away on, on track one here, this is giving you a lot of what Spectre the 007 one that we just looked at, giving you a lot of the same things where it's orchestra plus electronic. I think in some ways Dune might be doing it better in the sense that it is more of a an album that you can also put on and listen to more of it throughout, um, at least in my experience. The, the sound of the orchestra is a bit crisper and cleaner sounding than that slightly more muted and mellow sound of the Spectre soundtrack. It was almost like in Spectre, they muted the orchestral recording slightly to allow those electronic moments and sounds to kind of come forward with more energy and, and excitement, which is great. And I'm not knocking it for that. It's just a different presentation. And I think I prefer Dune a little bit more, but let's try a few more tracks and find out. Okay, I take it back. I'm completely wrong. This has got more or at least as much of that kind of ambient sound as 007, the Spectre one. So I think both are on the same mark where there's certain tracks that I would use potentially for specific tests. It's not so much an album that I'm going to put on and listen to. Obviously what I've done, which I didn't even realize I've done, is just selected certain tracks out of Dune to put in my playlists. Um, and I've left out tracks like here, I'm at, at Gom Jabbar, track four, very ambient sound. And it doesn't, doesn't really help me. It doesn't give me a sense of what the system's capable of because I've got no reference point for how it should sound, how it's laid out. There's not a lot of imaging information. It's just ambient noise. Great for a movie soundtrack for creating atmosphere, maybe not so much for testing systems. So I think what we've got with Dune is another one, like I've already said, like Spectre. The, the thing that I'd mention here is I think this is probably a crisper sounding recording than what you get in Spectre. On the other hand, though, it's also more artificially put together. So obviously, again, this has been done as a soundtrack. It's not been made as a test album, and nor should it be. But what you're getting is, is sound that is kind of artificially stitched together. That's interesting and exciting, but it's an album that I, I do use and, and have used for testing specific abilities like deep bass. A couple of these tracks have got very, very deep bass notes. And so if you want to hear how your system handles those, if it's getting deep enough, if it's under control, it's great for that. It's not a great reference point if you want to hear an, a sort of natural representation of a sound stage and how an orchestra might be laid out because all the music's been pieced together to create specific spatial arrangements that we have no reference point for. It's great if you want to know how well a system does imaging in terms of can it place an image, can it isolate it from everything else that's going on. Fantastic. Those sorts of impulse response, tactile bass type moments, it's great for that. Um, but I think it's more, it's one of those targeted test albums more so than a put it on and get a whole sense of your system. I don't think it's going to do that so well. That's where I'd turn to something like Human, The Red Turtle, etc. Those are going to give you more of a sense of your whole system's capabilities just by putting on a track or an album 
at a time and listening to the whole thing, this is much more targeted, much more focused. Still great, amazing recording, um, but it's more of that sort of specific, what do you want to hear? Grab that track, listen for that, and then move on to other tracks to tell you other things. So we're going to move on from June. Again, another brilliant recording. And now we're going very, very different. Another one I know well, which is Cowboy Bebop. So this is all, almost all, if not all, done by the seatbelts. And um, Yoko Kano, I think it's is the name of the lady that composed most of it. Very, very cool movie, TV series. Um, I'm talking about the original anime here, although I quite enjoy the Netflix version as well. Um, a lot of jazz influences here, a lot of bebop influences here, as you'd expect, and generally very well recorded. So let me just, uh, I was going to shuffle it, but I can't shuffle it from there. So I'm just going to play it. This is an interesting one. Some of the music in, in Cowboy Bebop has been deliberately mixed in a way that it almost makes it sound like it's coming through a radio, not in a really bad lo-fi way, but the first couple of tracks here, which is uh, Tank and Rush, they don't sound like you're in the room with the musicians. They sound like you're listening to it being played through some sort of other system. Uh, and I'm guessing that's deliberate as part of the character of the music. Then you get to a, a track like Spokey Doki and you feel like, and it sounds like you're in the room with the musicians. There's a harmonica and a slide guitar and they're beautifully recorded, wonderfully clear in front of you, placed well in space, etc. So I think if you're going to use this this album as any sort of a test, you do have to choose which tracks you're you're focusing on. Not all of them are going to be great for that, but when you hit the good moments, it is really well recorded and it's all great music as well. One other thing I'd say about Cowboy Bebop is that the recording's quite intimate and that's not a bad thing. It's just worth being aware. It's not going to give you a sense of this massive soundstage from your system, whether it's headphones or speakers. Um, everything's quite close, which is great because you almost feel like you can reach out and touch the musicians because it's so well recorded and mixed. But do be aware it's not going to be a great test for seeing how big and expansive and spacious your soundstage is. So excellent for clarity, resolution, image focus is great, sense of separation is great, overall scale not so much though. Um, but if you're just looking for a beautifully recorded track with a range of blues and jazz and bebop and stuff like that, it's really, really cool. Great recommendation. Could easily have gone over to my jazz um, audio file albums, which is coming up next time. And by the way, if you haven't given me a recommendation for that, I'll try to remember to put a link down, down below here. But if I do forget, it's also over in the Passion for Sound community page here on YouTube. So go find the, um, the post. It'll be only one or two posts down if it's not the top one. And do share with me if you've got a recommendation for audio file jazz albums. I would love you to send that through via the survey link there. Um, but for now, I'm going to say that, yeah, Cowboy Bebop, great album, wonderful recordings for the most part. Just be aware of those couple that do sound like they're kind of coming through a stereo system or something, because uh, those aren't going to be so impressive on first listen. Whereas when you get into the really impressive ones, they're beautifully recorded. So Cat Blues, Felt Tip Pen, um, there's a few others I've skimmed past, I didn't take note of the names, but they're really nicely recorded, very enjoyable music and very, very clean and resolving sound. So great recommendation once again. Next one is Blade Runner. This is one where I, again, I know the movie. I hadn't really thought about the playlist, the playlist, the soundtrack before. Very much like Spectre and Dune. This is another one of those albums that's very high on ambient sounds. There's not a lot of musical or melodic kind of content here. So do be aware of that if you're looking for test albums. This one is not so much about the, the musical journey so much as hearing if your system can do specific types of notes, deep bass, rumbles, big ambient sounds. You're not going to get that sort of orchestral sense and the textural sense that you get from some of the other albums we've talked about here. So I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time on this one. Blade Runner for me, it's an incredibly recorded album as are pretty much anything that Hans Zimmer does is going to be a good recording. It's not a musical journey so much as a special focused, can my system do this album? Like I said, for Spectre and for Dunes, for Dune, I should say. So I'm going to keep on moving now. Um, I'm actually running out of time here as well. So let's pause on Blade Runner. Amazing recording. Nice recommendation for targeted testing um, in terms of exactly what it is that, that you want to know that your system can do. That brings us now to an outlier in the mix, which is the Back to the Future 3 soundtrack. This is probably a halfway point between some of the others uh, in both directions that we tried. So a bit of ambient content in here, also a lot of orchestral and quite melodic stuff going on. The recording's very clean and very crisp. So for those of you looking for dynamics in your system, clarity, resolution, etc., of an orchestral type sound, this is really good. The thing that's worth keeping in mind though is that it's not going to give you 
uh, a lot of soundstage depth based on what I'm hearing. It's quite a flat recording left to right. So a bit like whatever we started on, I can't think what the very first thing was that we tried, but very similar to that where I'm getting a lot of left to right spread, not a lot of depth information in this particular recording. So it's probably not one of the strongest. It's very clean recording, but maybe not the best in terms of everything you can take into account, including spatial cues. I'm going to try a couple more tracks, but I think we're done with this one. So there's lots of texture, lots of clarity, the percussion, the brass, they're all really, really cleanly recorded. But what I'm finding is that when the back instruments in the orchestra, so again, percussion, brass, etc., when those instruments that are further back in the orchestra come in, they're going up in the soundstage more so than back in the soundstage. Um, so for me, it's not as natural as I would like it to be from a headphone point of view. That's one area that, again, listening on speakers, it's going to sound a bit more natural because they're throwing more of a a distant soundstage rather than being quite intimate. But at the same time, knowing that you can get other recordings that do both depth and height and everything else, I think there's other, there's other albums in here that I think are doing a better job, like Human, like uh, Red Turtle, and like The Mission. So this one's good, very clean recording, lots of dynamics if you want to check for dynamics and texture. But I think some of the others are doing more things just as well, and in some cases better. Let's move on now to the final couple of soundtrack albums we've got here. I was expecting to see The Dark Knight come up in here because there's one track in The Dark Knight that a lot of people talk about. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but there's some incredible bass in there that can be epic if you want to test the bass um, depth and also presence that your system can generate down low. Uh, but that's not the case. What we're actually looking at here is Batman Returns. So this is the old 1992 film, the Michael Keaton Batman. And, um, or I could probably call it the Tim Burton back, Batman, might be the other way to put it. And um, so this is a surprise to me. As I said before, I haven't tried any of these albums yet in detail. So this is all new to me. Let's have a listen and see what we hear. Straight away, it's quite an immediate and direct recording. What I mean by that is the sound's quite quite intimate, it's quite close to you, but that also means it brings energy to the, all, all the instruments, all the sounds in there. So the horn section is quite close relative to what you'd expect from an orchestral layout if you like um, so that's both good and bad i think spatially it's not great potentially but in terms of energy dynamics texture and general tonality it's really nice very clean it's it's a lot like actually the um, back to the future 3 soundtrack in the sense that it's very clean very crisp but i think spatially maybe not ideal for a, a test for me at least um, and interestingly this came at a similar era in terms of recording, movies, the sound. So I wonder if there was a bit of a, a time period thing here where this is the way the soundtracks were recorded. It's also the style of film too. It's kind of the action adventure type film. So that might play a part. So it's, it's not blowing me away. It's a very clean, crisp, nice dynamic recording. It's not standing out to me like some of the others we've talked about so far, but let's see where else we go. This is another one of those albums, as you'd probably expect, where there's a lot of kind of ambient sounds that, that are kind of building tension in the movie rather than melodic kind of enjoyment listening type stuff. And this this survey, what I asked people to share was audio file, kind of what you listen to to hear the most of your system. So it doesn't mean it should be melodic and enjoyable, but just pointing it out for those that want to go through this list and pick out the ones they might want to try. This is one that's more a choose a track to show you a specific thing about the system rather than put on an album and maybe enjoy the whole thing end to end. Um, of course, if you do that, that's great too. The point I'm getting at here, though, is that a lot of these tracks, it's a burst of sound here and then background simmering sort of sounds and another burst somewhere else to create that tension in a movie. But on its own, it's it's not telling you a lot about the system other than its ability to maybe go loud and have lots of texture at a particular moment in time. So I think, so I think I'm going to probably lump this into the same category as the um, Back to the Future, even Dune and um, Blade Runner 2049. I think they're all similar in the sense that there's some nice, technically very clean, crisp recordings. I think the soundstage depth on this is a bit lacking for me. I'm wondering if it's been mixed in such a way that it was kind of a little bit loudness-like. So if we think about the loudness wars in pop music, it's got that kind of in-your-face mix, which would have been exciting and helpful for a film score to bring that energy but I think from a, a pure audiophile listening, testing systems point of view, this probably isn't one of the strongest in the mix. Very clean recording, very dynamic and textural, but lacking in that spatial side of things and without that kind of melodic journey to bring you on that maybe gives you the sense of what the full system's doing 
at, at any point in time if you just want to put it on and listen to it. But as I said, to pull out a particular track for a particular characteristic you want to know about, that's where it could be very, very good. So we're going to can that one there, not can it, that's the wrong term. We're not bidding it, it wasn't a bad suggestion, we're just going to move on from that one there. And this one's been recommended multiple times, American Beauty. So let's give that a run. Another one that I actually recall from the movie, I remember sort of noticing the quality of this one, but let's have a listen. Even just a few seconds in the, uh, I'm thinking it's a xylophone, it might be a marimba, but I think it's a xylophone in the opening piece. Um, it's so clear, you can hear the, the hit of each um, hammer on the, on the keys. You can hear the resonance of it. Uh, very, very clearly imaged, great tonality of both the texture of the hit, but then the resonance afterwards. Really, really beautiful starting point. This is a really nice contrast. I'm only up to track two here. We're up to a rose in uh, American Beauty. When we talked about the hours and I said that texturally and tonally it was all quite similar throughout, this is different straight away. So we've gone from Dead Already, which was all about that xylophone sound. Now we get into a rose and you've still got the xylophone, that sort of thematic kind of carry through. But what you're also now getting is there's a um, there's a triangle potentially in there. There's some sort of high chime or something being played. So you're getting a very different tonality and feel it's much lighter, much brighter. There's strings now brought into the mix. So straight away, if you were to put on these first couple of tracks, you're getting a sense of a range of things that your system can do. Whereas I feel like some of the other albums here aren't giving us that as much as I've talked about. I feel like I keep stopping every single track. Um, the beginning of Power of Denial, if you want to hear good bass depth and and also texture, because there's actually some texture to this bass, there's what sounds like a bass guitar doing a glissando from a, a high note sliding down, and it gets very, very deep, and it gives you a nice sense of rumble from the whatever the system is that you're using, if it's capable of it. Um, there's another, you know, yet another thing it can show you within the first three tracks. You're getting a large range of sense of what your system can do. So this one's proving to be a real winner. I'm not finding myself as drawn to this music as I was to say Human or The Mission or The Red Turtle, but um, definitely a great recording, a great range of content in terms of texture, quality, timbre, etc. I was just about to jump in and say that the one criticism I had of this was that it wasn't giving you a large soundstage scale. And it absolutely is, and I love this because what it's doing is it's giving us tracks that some tracks are quite intimate and close where there's only a few instruments involved, but then you get to a track like Mr. Smarty Man and all of a sudden here you can hear this big expansive soundstage because the orchestra is laid out behind the kind of solo instruments, if you like, and then the solo instruments sit forward of the orchestra, really well imaged, really well defined. This is, this is another big winner for me. As I said, musically, it's not as compelling to me as some of the others, but from a recording, audio file, testing a system point of view, I think this is just one of those things where you could put on the whole album and really get to understand a system within the first, what are we up to, six tracks. Um, and of course, there's probably more, more great stuff to come. So I'm going to hear just a few more tracks, see if there's anything that stands out. But otherwise, we'll move on from this one soon as a, another great opportunity or option for you. This one's really impressed me. Just the scale of texture, tonality, scale in terms of the size as well from one track to the next. It's got a bit of everything going on here. This is a, a really excellent recommendation right up there with those other top ones that I've mentioned before. So yes, it's awesome. Check it out if you haven't already. Um, it's going to reward you on a great system. But for now, let's move on to the next album, which might now be our last. Yes, it is. And this is the Theory of Everything soundtrack. Here's a nice contrast in the first track, Cambridge 1963. We immediately hear a different approach to miking and mixing a piano where, where the piano's off on the right-hand side, you can hear that it's in a larger space. But the piano hasn't been mixed to be really huge, it's been kept quite small, but you can hear the space around it, which I quite like. This one's interesting. It's it's a beautifully recorded orchestral recording in general. And when I say recorded, I mean recorded, mixed, mastered, etc. Um, it's got a beautiful tonality that's quite smooth. It's not one of those aggressive and textural sounding recordings of an orchestra. So much as being a bit smoother. And I don't know what's right or wrong when it comes to an orchestra. It's going to depend on the auditorium it's in, how far back you're sitting. So what is true versus not true when it comes to listening to an orchestra is very hard to define. So instead, what I'm going to say is I think it sounds great. That's all That's all that really matters. It sounds really good. There's a nice sense of width in the soundstage. It's not completely left right, but there's not a lot of depth in this one. So again, what I'm noticing is that sounds like the woodwind. There's quite a lot of flute work in this, in this score so far. I'm up to the domestic pressures track. The the flute kind of sits only just a hair back, if at all back from the strings. 
And so you're not going to get a huge sense of scale and depth in the soundstage from this, but what you are getting is a wonderful sense of tonality. Each instrument has seemingly got its own place in space, even though there's a, a fairly flat, not a flat sense to the soundstage, but not a huge amount of depth is probably a better way to put it. It's not flat like some of the others. So if we think about the delivery from um, Batman, the delivery from um, Back to the Future 3, those had quite a flat in-your-face delivery, which I think was reminiscent of the type of movie and maybe the era in which they were being produced. This is much more natural sounding, but it isn't hugely deep. Let's try a few more tracks. I'll just see if there's anything else to talk about. So I think for me, having listened to a bunch of tracks here, I think it's a lovely recording, a lovely album. The music's beautiful. It's quite melodic music. So unlike some of those that were more ambient soundtracks, the the every track that I've tried on here, I haven't tried all of them, but most of them, they're all quite melodic. So it's an album you could put on and enjoy. It's a beautifully recorded album in the sense that it's clean, it's smooth. There's a nice sense of separation between instruments. But I don't know if I'd go so far as adding it to a test album playlist. Some of the others I've talked about here, I would absolutely test systems with. This one I just put on to enjoy, I think. Um, and the reason for that is, again, it comes back to that sense of depth and space in the soundstage. There are some lovely elements to the recording where things like the harp that's played at times and there's some um, bells or chimes or something similar, if I remember correctly from as I skipped through. There was a nice sense of articulation to those notes. There was a good sense of clarity and tonality is lovely across the board from the lows to the highs. But I think maybe it's lacking a little bit of texture at times in the strings. It's a very smooth recording. So I don't know if it's going to tell you a lot about the textural and resolution characteristics of your system. And also you're not going to get a lot of depth information from this particular album. So lovely music, enjoyable to listen to, nicely recorded, but it's probably not at that top tier that some of the others like Red Turtle, uh, Human and The Mission were on. Those probably were the three standouts for me. Um, and so I think at this point, let's wrap it up there by saying, again, thank you to all of you that suggested albums. There wasn't a miss in this whole lot. They were all fantastic in their own way. But I definitely, I just mentioned those three standouts. Those are the absolute winners for me. Uh, I've got links in the description down below to this playlist on Tidal and Cobras. So you can go and check them out for yourself. Uh, let me know, let us know in the comments what your favorite tracks are from here. Uh, if you want to suggest other albums, please do. I won't be doing a follow-up video on this particular topic, so it'll just be to share via the comments if others want to go check it out. But um, let us know in the comments your experience with these albums, other albums, etc. And if you haven't already and you want to contribute to the upcoming version of this approach, but for jazz, so top audiophile jazz albums, then make sure you check out, I'll try to remember as I said before, to put a link in the description down below. If I forget that though, just jump over to the community page here on YouTube for Passion for Sound, and there'll be a link to the survey for the top jazz albums where you can go through and tell me your suggestions for the top jazz audiophile albums for me to do the same approach with. And again, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is only the second time I've done this, so I welcome any feedback on the approach, the delivery, etc. If there's anything you'd like me to see, sorry, if there's anything you'd like to see me do more or less or talk about something specific in these videos, let me know. I'll see if I can incorporate it. But for now, let me leave to the music, probably listening to some film scores, I'm guessing. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Passion for Sound.